Do you ever wonder why bicycles, cars, planes, buildings and bridges look the way they do? Could they have been designed another way? Well, as technology advances, we are seeing a fundamental shift in how things are designed. With high computing technology at our disposal, we can now use computers to design even the most commonly utilised items like chairs. As a result, we are seeing remarkably different shapes that look very organic in design. In this video, we will cover a new branch of design engineering called generative design and how it is beginning to shape the world around us. On this channel, Synergy Files, we aim to inspire people towards engineering and technology for a better and more sustainable world. Subscribe today to get notifications of all our latest videos. The human mind looks for the simplest options when it comes to designing objects. Just ask someone to design a table. They will think up a design most probably based on straight lines. A slab with four straight legs will be the obvious solution. But is that table the most optimal design in terms of weight? Probably not. Now let's allow a computer to come up with the design. Just specify the height of the table and the area for flat surface required. The AI takes over and on a blank canvas comes up with multiple solutions through iterations. If you tell it to come up with the most sturdy design for the lowest possible weight, it will do so. The results are amazing. They look something out of nature. One can see the example of how the generative design software came up with a chair design that weighed 2.9 kilogram as opposed to the normal 10.3 kilogram. If we look around us, the way we have traditionally designed our products, they look quite different to how nature has designed something with similar functions. Our designability in the past has been limited by both the available materials and the manufacturing processes to shape them. It is also dictated by our memory of shapes that have worked for us in the past. But with the new production techniques at our disposal, like additive manufacturing and in particular 3D printing, we can design our artistic rather than engineering imagination. We have computers to help us reimagine the way things can be designed. Using specialised algorithms, we can generate several arrangements that fulfil the purpose and are optimised to any required parameter. The final design can then be selected based on aesthetics and practicality. Generative design leads to products that are lighter, stronger and use much less material. Weight saving in components can lead to a performance increase in many applications, from drones to passenger aircrafts to cars. All of them can benefit from lower weight as it directly reduces the energy use. The weight saving are not just in the transport sector, but in almost all machines with actuators, all rotating components and even static structures. For example, the steel frames in buildings and the beams in bridges can be reduced in weight and use less building material through generative design. The way organisms develop functional parts is through the process of growth. On the other hand, the way we generally design objects is by taking a bulk material and removing the excess to bring it into shape. Moulding process is an exception to that. Even in moulding, the core is made by the process of material removal. As organisms grow, they add material in areas where more stress is experienced. Hence, we often see legs or fingers, stems, branches not of the same size. The human bones are of unique shape as they grow in a fashion that reduces overall stress on them. Compare the bone to any structural element a human mind has come up with and you can appreciate the difference. Through generative design algorithms, we can come up with bone-like designs and through 3D printing, we are also in the position to produce them. You can feed the computer that you want a chair that supports X amount of weight, costs X amount and uses X amount of material, and it can come up with several designs that meet your criterion. In short, generative design replicates natural world's evolutionary approach with cloud computing to provide thousands of solutions to one engineering problem. It's not the first time. Engineers are always looking towards nature for guidance. There exists a whole field of biomimicry through which engineers explore the designs already provided by nature for solutions to problems. These design solutions in nature have been perfected through thousands of years of evolutionary process. For example, 
The addition of winglets and sharklets in passenger aircraft have increased the fuel efficiency by up to 5%. This was done by looking at the upturned wingtips of soaring birds. The difference with generative design is that we are looking at natural ways of growing a design from the onset rather than applying them retrospectively. And this is where we can differentiate between generative design and technologies that feel like it, but are not. For example, topology optimization, lattice optimization, parametrics or similar technologies are focused on improving a pre-existing design, not creating new design possibilities with generative design. Another advantage of generative design is the ability to consolidate parts. This means that assemblies of two, three or more parts can be converted into a single part devoid of joints. A great example to mention here is the aircraft manufacturer Airbus. They used generative design to reimagine an interior partition for its A320 aircrafts and came up with an intricate design that ultimately shaved off 45% or 30 kilos of the weight off the parts. That weight decrease will result in a massive reduction of jet fuel consumed and a reduction of hundreds of thousands of tonnes of carbon dioxide emitted when applied across its fleet of planes, equal to taking 96,000 passenger cars off the road for a year. So, as 3D printing technology becomes more scalable, cheaper and faster, generative design will make way in more and more products, from vehicle frames bicycles to furniture and even buildings all have started to benefit from this technology. We have now also got technology to print composites with graphene as the matrix material. However, time required to print and cost are still the major challenges. And with this video concluded, if you learned from this video, do give us a thumbs up and thank you for your attention.